spit spot, everyone, spit spot. Harry Potter, Peter Pan. Water. Let's not forget what Trump has done to the environment. In particular, Trump has thrown away many of the efforts to try to reduce our negative effects on climate change. He's a science denier, and he makes his policy decisions based on his denial of science. His approach to just about everything is from an anti-scientific perspective, not a non-scientific perspective. I mean, that would at least be tolerable. But this is anti-scientific, like the difference between an atheist and an anti-theist, the difference between a non-racist and an anti-racist. This kind of mindset sees science and pretty much spits on it. It's all about gut feelings, and it's all about tapping into all of the negative attributes of what being a man was 50 years ago. I just want to squeeze this in there real quick, is that uh, obviously I have a problem with trickle-down economics. I have a problem with the standard right-wing policies when it comes to the economy uh, and social programs, right? And Trump generally falls into many of those. Some of those things are just to be expected out of anyone that's a Republican. So, okay, here's the big problem with Trump's approach, okay? If a president can never admit when they're wrong, then if the United States does something stupid, the leader of the country has the country, has the government of the country do something stupid, and it negatively affects a bunch of other countries, or, I mean, even if negatively affects one other country, whatever, you know, it negatively affects some of the rest of the world, there'd be likely no way to really resolve that problem because you're not really able to look at the problem to begin with. You're not even able to admit that you did anything wrong. We could never admit fault. Everything we do is great and, and perfect and, and wonderful. And, you know, so as I said, there's no way to fix a problem without looking at what it is, which means there's no way to fix the problem. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone. And to be able to admit to and learn from those mistakes is crucial. I mean, sure, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if he has done something and it has negative effects, he'll probably not do exactly that same thing again. But he'll never admit that he should have done something differently. I just don't think a number of Trump supporters, especially the diehard Trump supporters, see how bad of a situation we could be in if the person on top can't ever admit to doing anything wrong or doing something they regret or, you know, doing something that had a negative effect. Do some of you just simply not see the ramifications of that? Everything was the best. Everything was the greatest, no matter how bad it actually was. Can you imagine treating world leaders the same way? Granted, I mean, he has gotten a number of decent things accomplished when it comes to world peace. So we've been fortunate so far, and I do appreciate that very much. But we're also very lucky. Because of some of his actions, some might say that he's anti-war. You know, in the comment section, I had, uh, I had agreed with someone on that, and then I said, well, wait a minute. You know, there are so many military practices that get talked about that he hasn't put any sort of stop to or even slowed down. You know, like drone bombings, which for a population are, are one of the most terrorizing things you could do. I mean, can you imagine if, if people started drone bombing here in the United States? People would be continually looking up and being worried. They can be made pretty quiet, and it could just happen at random. I mean, we freak out over any bit of terrorism that happens in this country, but we don't seem to think about how that affects other countries. You know, if, if Trump is really anti-war, he should be putting a stop to, th to these drone bombings. 
But the biggest thing that Trump does that just doesn't make any sense when it comes to apparently or supposedly being anti-war is that he's constantly increasing the spending on the military. It's as if we're preparing for war. I mean, quite frankly, you know, a country that I could see us going to war with if we had another Trump term it would be China. I could actually see us going to war with China. Many of the ways that he's been talking towards China has, has been very antagonizing. You know, I could see something like that, which would make sense to him, you know, wanting to expand the power of the military. So, to quote Einstein, you cannot simultaneously prevent and prepare for war. The very prevention of war requires more faith, courage, and resolution than are needed to prepare for war. No, I don't like Biden. And I'm quite afraid of Biden's warmongering. But let me be clear about something, okay? The things that you lie about make a big difference. Someone lying about something stupid and insignificant and doesn't hardly affect anyone is quite different than someone lying about something that's important and pressing and affects a lot of people. If there's something Trump has done or has had even inaction on something that has horrible effects, he'll downplay the effects, he'll downplay the people who are complaining about the effects, and then he won't change course. You know, because after all, everything is great, everything is perfect. He doesn't make mistakes, and he doesn't regret anything. And so from there, we have the issue that a number of people look at Trump as a role model. You know, if you act like Trump, you can be successful. A real man. And then there's all the punching down and bullying and the no-filters situation that everyone on all sides, seem to have adopted, you know, as a result of this, because for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, and then they compound each other, and, I mean, you can argue about who started it, but how are you going to stop it, or at the very least, slow it down? I want the fear to be gone of what Trump might spontaneously do, and then, of course, not be able to admit that he did anything wrong, or really admit to anything. Unless it does something positive, and then, you know, he's, he's all there to, you know, but if it has a negative effect, you know, well, he, well, he's not responsible. Seriously, that's just about the worst kind of personality one can have as a president. We can't allow someone like that to ever become president again. After this experience, we have no excuse to ever let that happen again. If we claim to be good people then we can't be trying to get revenge on people who participated in it. We're all just humans, reacting to situations via our genetics, what we're taught, and our experiences. People can be sucked into cults. People can be sheep. People will collectively act like a destructive animal when in a mob. Whether it's an in-person mob or an online mob. Whether physically destructive or emotionally destructive. We can't fully hold it against them, okay? People are people. You can't hold people to higher standards than people. I just hope that a number of Trump supporters really understand why so many people like myself just really, really don't like Trump and why sometimes personality makes a big difference. You know, there's a lot of different personalities out there, but... One where someone feels like they can't, they're, they're incapable of making mistakes, no matter how bad something turns out, you can't ever admit when you're wrong. Maybe you just think, oh, it'll, he'll always just make good decisions. Do you really feel that way about Trump? Look how many businesses he's bankrupted. Okay, he doesn't always make good decisions, and he makes a lot of mistakes. Yet when you ask him about any of them, He'll make it sound like everything he did was perfect. I, I'm repeating myself, but it's frustrating not to, for, to, to know that people don't understand why that's a concern in someone who's a president. If they're not a president, they're not in that, in that position, 
they're not the figurehead for the country, then it doesn't really matter. If you're just some rich guy doing rich guy things, you know, yeah, act that way all you want. But don't run the country, you know? But I've went into the, uh, into the things I've already went into a number of times before. I just wish, I just wish there was a way to, to get those who support Trump so much to understand why this is so important to us. You know, maybe you really do think that, one, policy is all that matters, and two, you somehow believe that Trump will never make a mistake. I can't see any other logic of any kind that would... That's what I just can't figure out. You know, if you know the things that I've, I've said in this video, if you know this and you see this, but you're still all right with Trump, what, what is this missing piece of information that makes it okay for you? That, that I'm not getting, that someone like myself isn't getting? What is this key piece of information? That Trump is a god? That Trump literally can do no wrong? Everything he does is 4D chess? I guess that's another thing that, that, that concerns me, is, is just how cult-like so many Trump supporters are. It's cult-like. It's like you worship everything that he does. Oh, I don't do that. Well, then, why can't you ever admit that he's done something wrong? And why don't you have a problem with someone who can never admit they've done anything wrong, or that they could have done something better? What is this piece of information that I don't have that makes your mindset make any bit of fucking sense at all? So many of you talk about having these principles. Does none of this stuff matter to your principles? I just don't understand. Thanks for watching.